good morning good afternoon good evening so it's my pleasure to welcome you all for this session on renewable integration for an fpso along with the battery energy storage systems so it is etap event we are electrical engineers we are studying most dynamic system in the world power system so we should have energy we should have an excitement if you are an electrical engineer if you have an energy and if you are super excited for this session in an etap event so just put e e e in chat and we will start our session i am able to see your chats so i am expecting few more people to type out e e e so that like i can understand you have energy to go through the sessions lovely lovely so what's the topic we are discussing in the next 15 minutes is renewable integration for an fpso along with the battery energy storage systems so we are going to talk about fpso we are going to talk about a wind turbine generator we are going to talk about a battery energy storage systems that means three equipments we are talking about we are going to talk about three simulation softwares power pro etap and bscat so in the meantime can you just quickly get some information like which country and which city you are joining from so that gives me an idea like means so which geography and what time you are attending the sessions can you just put like which city and which country you are joining from that's slowly so let's jump into the topic now so if you are able to see my screen as well as hear my voice just put loud and clear in chat and we will start our session great so all at 15 minutes one minutes is up like we have 14 more minutes to discuss about our topics if you have any q and a keep it in the parking lot and the last 5 minutes will be allotted for a q and a we can take up the questions so topic is renewable integration which is a wind turbine generator in this case for an fpso with optimal battery energy storage system sizing using etap and a pscat co simulation is our topic if the topic is of interest for you just type i first letter of interest in chat so let me introduce myself i am selva kumar head of business at power projects india let's move on what we are going to talk about in the next 15 minutes existing system what's the electrical configuration of present existing system of this fpso what's the additional requirement of the customer on this existing fpso in order to meet the customer expectations what are the challenges what are the possible solutions on simulations using etap and with the simulation using etap and what are the key benefits which has been derived from like the customer expectations to the challenges to the solutions that's what we are going to talk about so let's move further so what's the existing system and before that like how many of you are aware what is fpso is if you are aware of fpso just put fpso in chat if not no worries fpso is floating production storage and offloading vessel so that's pretty much what you are seeing here fpso is floating production storage and offloading vessel so this existing system from the electrical perspective it has a peak demand of 70 megawatt it is powered by four numbers of 25 megawatt gas turbine generators running in n plus 1 configurations that mean even if three numbers of 25 megawatt gas turbine running they will be able to easily meet out the 70 megawatt peak demand but still they are running four numbers of 25 megawatt generator may not be running close to the full load but they will be sharing the 70 megawatt by like maybe 17.5 megawatt each by each gas turbine generators so this system consists of three variation in the voltages 13.8 kv that's where the generators are connected and large capacity motors are connected and 4.16 kv where other motors are connected and 0.48 kv that is further sub distribution level and at the moment 
this existing system is 100% conventional generation gas turbine generator and obviously carbon emission is inevitable and unavoidable in the existing systems. So if you have worked in the FPSO, uh, this might be clear for you. If not, at least this gives you a high level overview. So if so far clear, just put CC, crystal clear, CC in chat. Lovely. That's great. Beautiful. Let's move on to the next slide. Let's go a bit more depth on the existing system. So you can see here, like there are four numbers of gas turbine generators, 25 megawatt each with 0.8 power factor, 31.25 MBE, 13.8 kV bus. And like all the existing system challenges. So typically when you have like four numbers of gas turbine generators, connected to a common bus with the bus coupler closed. And like you have large capacity motors, like you can see like 11 megawatt, four numbers, 11 megawatt, one numbers, 6.25 megawatt, one numbers, like means if it is a direct online, they will also inject huge short circuit current. So the 13.8 kV switch gear short circuit level generally cross 50 kilams or 63 kilams, which is the maximum short circuit rating of this medium voltage switch gears. So what we need to do then, like we may need to think of some methods to limit the short circuit current. So that like means to say we can go for 40 or 50 kilos uh, switch gears. So there is a fault current limiting device, right? Like there could be an IS limiter and some other devices, right? And like the, one of the other challenges, like if you look at like the capacity of the motor is huge and this motor takes like six times the current or 7.2 times the current during starting the voltage dip during the starting of the motor and its impact on the voltage and the reduction in the voltage at this 13.8 kV bus on the other motors which are already running, these are all something carefully has to be studied. And if you look at, like the system may consist of quite a lot of variable frequency drives as well that injects the harmonics to the systems and 13.8 kV cables this harmonics may resonate with this capacitance and then probably like harmonics has to be studied in detail. And pretty interesting point, we have talked about N plus one configurations. If any one generator trips due to fault or whatever may be the reasons, remaining three generators should be capable of catering the entire load without a blockout or complete setup. So whether they are capable or not, that can be simulated using transient stability. Maybe there are quite a lot of parameters like inertia and the ramp up capability of this generators, frequency dependent loads. There are quite a lot of uh, technical stuffs which has been involved in this. So when we are moving further, like I mean to say protection challenges depends upon number of generators running or even if all the generators are running with respect to time, the short circuit current will be keep coming down with respect to time because it's not an infinite source. It's the generators, their short circuit current with respect to time will come down because of sub transient reactants to transient reactants. So XT double dash to XT dash, then to XT. So with respect to time, the short circuit current will come down and then that poses some challenges in the protection settings as well. And of course, we need to ensure that, like me to say, with the transient stability, we find out a critical clearing time and isolating the faults well within this critical clearing times. These are all challenges in the conventional FPSO itself and the system needs to be designed. And ETAP is being used for worldwide for such FPSO systems and then probably giving beautiful results. What is new? So this project, like now everybody is talking about uh, environment, greenhouse, gas emissions, right? So obviously here also customer wants to curtail the gas emissions from the gas turbine generators and 25 percentage of the energy which is consumed by this FPSO has to be generated by, from the renewable resources. That's what the customer has set as an expectation. So. At least 25 percentage energy should be made by renewables. That's a customer expectation. When he's setting the expectations, he's also probably having another benchmarks. 
when you have renewables, maybe solar may not be possible uh, to meet 25 percentage of energy because that will be available only for part of the time. So it means straight away 12 hours, solar may not be available. So only option is like offshore wind. When we go with an offshore wind, when it is generating a peak, still your gas turbine has to run with the technical P minimum for the generator as well as the process requirements. So considering that, like the excess electricity should not go beyond 5 percentage. That's another customer expectations. And payback period has to be less than 10 years. That's another requirement from the customer. And of course, obvious objective is reduction in the carbon emission. And of course, there is no compromise on the reliability and safety that each and every customer always obviously looking at. So this is a customer expectations. Now we have seen what is an existing systems and what is the customer expectations in the existing systems. So far, if it is clear, if it is crystal clear, just to type CC in chat. Right. So park your questions uh, at the end. So we will be answering all your questions at the end. Like we will be having a dedicated Q and A sessions. Yeah. Thanks. Let's move further. So what are the challenges? Originally, when you have an FPSO, like almost it is a constant power load, except like the uh, means to say offloading time. But like means to say, even if there is a changes in the load, means to say governor governs the frequency by means of adjusting the uh, I means fuel input. But now it is just not the load variation. There is a wind variation as well. So what's the results which you are seeing here? This is a wind turbine power output. This simulation has been taken out from the software called Homer Pro. Like that plots 365 days in x-axis, 24 hours in the y-axis. And the color decides like what's the power output, right? Like red being the highest and black being the lowest, right? Like black means at zero power output, red means like 100% power output. And the color says like means we'll say the variation in the wind. So now when the wind is intermittent in nature and if it is keep changing, like now my governor system has an additional challenge. This governor has to govern the frequency, not only for the load variation, but also for the wind fluctuation. And the wind fluctuation, you can see, it is extremely, extremely high, right? And when this wind variation is high, still gas turbine generator governor is trying to govern the frequency, then it will increase the stress on the gas turbine. But it's not always possible, like assume that if you're crossing, say example, more than 10 percentage of the installed capacity goes renewables and intermittent in nature, then it is naturally the stress on the generators will be more like you may end up with the, like going for a battery energy storage systems to smoothen the renewable output or to reduce the stress on the gas turbine generators. So the spinning reserve required probably becomes another important aspect. So let's move on and look at some uh, back to basics, which we have studied some equations in our college days. So What's the equation which you are seeing? 2H divided by omega into d square del by dt square, which is equal to PA, which is equal to PM minus PE. That is a swing equation. And uh, I strongly recommend you to probably visit this paper, an intelligent load setting system application in a large industrial facility. This came from an ETAP way back in 2008 as an IEEE paper. I guess it will be available in the casual Google search, which you can search it. So if you go through this paper, then probably what we are discussing will be like more relevant and more easy to understand. So here it is an industrial facility when it is getting disconnected from the grid. Let me say how to do the load setting in an intelligent way is what this paper is discussing about. But now what we are discussing, how to size the battery energy storage system optimally so that to have the spinning reserve and prevent any load setting is what we are talking about in our slides. So the load variation is handled by governors to maintain the frequency. Sudden outage of generator results in dip in the frequency. Spinning reserve, like you need to maintain the spinning reserve to take care of the sudden load changes. And with an addition of wind turbine generators, you should have adequate sufficient spinning reserve to maintain for the 
wind variation as well. And if we are increasing the higher wind turbine generators, the results will be more. So swing equation is what we have discussed. Let's go further. Like the available solution is battery energy storage systems, energy storage system, PCS, battery, and how do we optimally size it's the question. So like there are various scenarios which has been worked around. So means what say we have worked around with 3 into 10 megawatt wind turbine generators, three numbers of 10 megawatt, two numbers of 12 megawatt, three numbers of 12 megawatt wind turbine generators. And this load is varying in FPSO from some years to years. First five years, there is a demand, like six to nine years, there's another demand and 10 to 12 years, there is an extra demand. So like means to so see how much is the renewable fraction, how much percentage of the energy is meant from the renewable energy, what's the excess electricity, all these things, or tabulated here and probably this is a commercial evaluation or only energy evaluation but when we are putting this like we need to perform the technical feasibility of the solutions when we say technical feasibility how the system technically functions right energy evaluation is what we have done previous slide using homer pro but you need to perform load flow studies short circuit studies motor acceleration studies Transient studies, and probably if you want to capture the behavior of the wind turbine generator as well as the battery energy storage systems, then ETAP plus PSCAD co simulation gives you an optimal, optimal results. You have to perform harmonic analysis, performing protection coordinations, and of course, like you will be having large transformers when you're going with, like, say, example, 3 into 12 megawatt wind turbine generators, you will be having at least 45 MBA transformer to step up from this 13.8 kV to 66 kV to connect with this wind turbine generators. Such an adjustation also needs to be done. So ETAP software provides a single platform with just integration with the PS CAD. And I mean, so say you can perform all the studies to validate the technical feasibility of the system is working or not. So what's the key benefits which we have derived? Like we have derived the optimal quantity of course, that we have derived it from uh, Homer Pro software. But like I mean, so say, once this optimal quantity size of the wind turbine generators and PCS and battery rating has been arrived from the commercial evaluations, we need to check the technical feasibility that has been validated with an ETAP simulations and PS cap. So the power quality, and it is a single software platform. So means it's just not enhanced power quality. It has enhanced reliability, enhanced safety, and enhanced performance of the system during steady state, during dynamics, and probably uh, like I mean, so say it's a single software platform with only ETA. You can do all the technical analysis, just only the external integration with the PSK. So, what's the future scope? You can probably perform time domain low flow integrating this uh, inputs from the uh, like I mean, so say wind turbine generator, like every five minutes power output or 15 minutes block power output that you can integrate with the ETAP and you can do time domain load flow. You can probably work around the best battery energy storage system capability to suppress the harmonics. It is just not that, like you can also think about, like means to say implementing ETAP real-time digital systems or ETAP SCADA or like ETAP microgrid controllers so that this entire control system can be, uh, like means to say, validated in, uh, like means to say, uh, I mean to say, ETAP real time as well. So I guess like you have learned something new in the sessions and we are happy to take out the uh, questions if any. And uh, if you want, just to make a note of, uh, this is my contact number and email ID. I'm Selva Kumar, getting the business at Power Projects. And now I know like there are quite a lot of questions because it's uh, like very technical depth concepts. If you have any questions, we are happy to answer the questions one by one. Yep. All right. Thank you all. Thank you so much.